So what I basically just told you is that the design and the implementation of meaningful interventions for digital development faces some particularities that make it extremely difficult and, and complex. So I kind of like symbolically threw up my hands in the air as a sign of despair and said, oh, this is really, really challenging. Now, having worked in, in that uh, on this challenge for, for many years now, over the years also, especially through the, my practical work in it at the United Nations, I, I found some ways how you can go about it and confront them. And these are particularities that I think are useful to consider when designing, be it public policies or private strategies for digitalization, to embrace digitalization. What are these? Well, the uncertainty uh, of exponential technological progress can be confronted with short-term flexibility. The fact that we deal with a general purpose technology can be confronted with a decentralization of the strategy. The unpredictability of side effects can be confronted and reduced a little bit uh, with private public sector alliances and the internationality of digital net networks naturally requires international coordination. So let's go through these four proxy solutions one by one on hand of example that I was personally very involved with the Latin American and Caribbean Action Plan for Digital Development ELAC, which I was spearheading in my role as the coordinator of the Information Society program of the United Nations Secretariat in Latin America and the Caribbean. So let's start with the first challenge, the uncertainty brought upon us by exponential technological progress. Well, first of all, despite all uncertainty, following the advice of Confucius, it is important to know where you would like to go in the long term, because otherwise, as Confucius says, no wind is favorable. So it's useful to have a long-term vision. Uh, we use the long-term vision of the World Summit on the Information Society, which proposed goals that were 10 years in the future. But 10 years in the future, if you face exponential technological progress, that is that's way too long. Who would know what happens in 10 years? Nobody can. Nobody can imagine. So basically what we did then on the regional level, we, we, we were breaking it down and we set up a first short-term action plan, which we called ELAC 2007. So all the governments of Latin America and the Caribbean met in Rio de Janeiro in 2005 and we set up a two-year action plan. And then in 2007, we again gathered all the governments and we evaluated the achievements and the shortcomings of these two years of work. Uh, then we created a new action plan, which we called ELAC 2010, uh, which was then approved. And again, two years later, all the governments again gathered, this time in Peru, and evaluated the work that has been done, uh, re-evaluated the priorities and adjusted them. And out of that came another short-term action plan called ELAC 2015, which was then evaluated in Mexico in 2015. And now the story continues with a new ELAC action plan. So you have this kind of like strategy design of a long-term vision and then these short-term adjustments that allows you to stay flexible and to adjust every two years. And that turns out to be important due to several reasons. One very basic reason is that, you know, these topics of digitalization, they are so new, we, we don't know a lot about many of them. So having short term adjustments allows us to fine tune the policy goals as we learn more about the topic. For example, in the first generation of ELAG in ELAG 2007, uh, the governments gathered and they gave themselves the goal to have one ICT access center per 20,000 people in the year 2007. So this goal was approved in 2005. And the truth is at the time, we had no idea how many ICT access centers there are, how many cyber cafes, how many libraries that will give public access to ICT. So the year after that was approved, we went ahead and took an inventory and we found out that on average, the region has already surpassed this goal by a factor of 10. We found 
about an ICT access center per about 2,000 people, not 20,000 people. Almost all countries in the region have already passed this goal, except these two here. And that shows you that often policies are made on the basis of you know, wild guesses and obviously they cannot have any effect if, if they are so off. So, but now then two years later, uh, the governments gathered in 2008 and fine-tuned this goal. And it now is very specific. It became very specific. They said they wanted to have one ICT access center per 1,750 people. Now, might be a little exaggerated to have such a specific number. But the good thing was by then the region had a mechanism in place that monitored and measured this very important issue of public access. If we compare the policy priorities between the first and the second generation of ELAC, we find that seven of the 30 thematic areas of the first generation of the action plan lost importance in only two years and were replaced with new areas of interest. Some of them because of technological progress, for example, down here are some that simply evolved and others because also government at that point realized, well, that is actually not so interesting. It's much more interesting to concentrate on some different issues. This shows that in only two years, a quarter of the policy agenda was esteemed to be obsolete. And if you look at it more in a graphical sense, these here is, this is the quarter of the goals that didn't find an equivalent in the new agenda that was only two years on. And uh, only also a quarter of the goals were very similar. Half of the goals were adopted but evolved, so they had adjustment. And that is a typical reflection of a policy agenda in an area with, with, with so much change as the digital revolution. If you do any other kind of policy agenda, you might not notice the need to adjust the agenda as much in only two years time. So long story short, it seems very useful to stay flexible, to adjust the strategy every few years and, and two years for a regional policy agenda seems to be a reasonable time frame where you can still do some work but after two three years you have to look at it again and adjust it adjust it to the evolved reality second the challenge that arises from the fact that digital technology affects all kinds of different sectors can be confronted by involving all kinds of different sectors. So basically to decentralize the agenda. Uh, for example, the first generation of the ELAC action plan, ELAC 2007, was basically written as a first draft by me. So I sat down on my computer and I proposed different policy goals, action goals. And then this first preliminary draft was circulated with all the government, government experts. They changed it, they eliminated some things, added some new things, and eventually approved this action plan in an intergovernmental meeting. But I personally, I could still see some of my handwriting in the final version and I thought to myself, how arrogant of me. I mean, the digital revolution touches so many different sectors. What do I really know about all these different sectors and all the different particularities within countries and the needs and demands by countries? I mean, it touches just everything. How, how arrogant, actually. So for the second round, I then proposed to the team that we do it the following way. We took the old action plan, the first generation of the action plan, and just simply executed a virtual online consultation. We just said, what do you guys think about these 30 priorities? Uh, do you want to add something? Do you want to delete something? And we received some 600, 700 contributions. These are contributions that are often already consolidated. So the 30 governments from the region, each one wrote a contribution. The international organizations, the World Bank, the Inter-American Development Bank, the Organization of American States, they all wrote a contribution. And also private sector companies and individuals, some academics, they wrote lengthy contributions and said, well, actually, the priority here is the following. What we did then with this 
collective brainstorming result is we consolidated it first in a personal round so that basically means me and some other members of the team we traveled around all latin america and the caribbean and talked with government officials talked with organizations talked with private sector companies with the big players in the region and did this three four months of presential uh, coordination and feedback exchange. Then we executed another virtual round and basically consolidated these results, which were then as a draft presented to the ministers of the region who approved it. And this result was then the new action plan, the second generation, ELAC 2010. The benefit was that we really opened it up, involved a lot of sectors, a lot of different experts, which then much rather reflected this all-pervasive character of digital ICT. Afterwards, this exercise was seen as the most extensive online participatory policymaking foresight exercise in the history of intergovernmental processes in the developing world. So um, uh, it was really an experience, uh, but it also shows that actually also ICT themselves the fact that we organized virtual consultations can help to change the way policy is done nowadays. So the all pervasiveness of the digital revolution can be confronted at least partially with a decentralized approach that asks for broad input. Now we also have the unpredictable side effects that arise from these from this myriad of interactions uh, that happen when a part of an ecosystem is affected and another part sets in. And a very complementary approach to the previous one is to create strategic private public Big sector alliances and that instead of also asking for very broad input ask for very specialized input uh, that means we ask for the opinion of experts it's important to involve both the private and the public sector in it because the private sector is often involved in the development of the technology so they have a much better idea where the technology is heading and the public sector often has a pretty good idea where it normatively wants to guide the entire story so for both working together you can reduce this uncertainty a little bit and you can identify many of these interactions that make this ecosystems as complex. Of course, both of them, the broad input and the specialized input are very complementary and it is impossible to distinguish them, but these are the two ideas. You need to have broad input and specialized input. So in the multi-stakeholder consultations that I just told you about when we created the second generation of the ELAC actions plans, you can see that actually the majority of the participants that sent us responses were from the private sector. Um, almost 40% of the responses came from the private sector, from private sector companies, telecom operators, software companies, and so forth, business commerce alliances. Um, a quarter of the responses came from the public sector, another quarter from academia, and the rest from civil society. You can also see that the level of education of the people who signed the contributions, I mean, as I said, often they reflected the opinion of an entire country or of an international organization, but at the end somebody signed them. And this was at two thirds of the time an advanced university degree, so master or PhD. So these people were also really experts. And that is very important. So if you try to design this agenda, talk with many people and involve many people because you get broad and very specialized input. That is not only important if you design public sector policies, also if you have a private sector strategy, you are confronted with such a big level of uncertainty and unpredictability that it's useful to gather both broad and specialized input to inform your strategy and to reduce this uncertainty. And finally, the challenge that digital networks are inherently international can most effectively be confronted with international coordination. Now that applies to private sector strategies and in public sector strategies, that's also very important. So governments actually need to coordinate. And that was one of the basic ideas behind the creation of a regional Latin American action plans that governments coordinate. For example, I give you here two examples. Um, one area that requires a lot of coordination is to assure that the different e-government solutions 
are interoperable with each other. What does that mean? So each government right now is creating an e-government solution. So they're digitalizing their public sector. And these government solutions are often not compatible one with the other. For example, if one country now digitalizes the database that shows trade data, so commerce data, and then it goes to the border to another country, and this country has a database with trade product data, we have to assure that both databases can speak to each other technically and according to statistical standards and so forth. So they need to be interoperable. And trade is only an obvious example. Obviously, it would be useful if governments could harmonize all kinds of databases. So you can compare and also exchange data where that would be necessary. And uh, it's useful to already agree on some standards even before you start to advance with e-government to very sophisticated applications. So that's one of the goals. Government post themselves. In, in the second generation of the plan, ELAC 2010, they said they want to work on interoperability of the e-government platforms throughout the regions. Another example of international cooperation in Latin America is the establishment of a network to exchange educational portal. So digital economies of scale say that it can cost millions of dollars to create a digital product such as a software to learn algebra or to learn biology or to learn a language. But once, once it is created, uh, there almost infinite economies of scales so is just copy paste. So this network was created in Latin America and that was another one of the goals of ELAC where some governments that developed a software since most countries in Latin America speak Spanish, it was often developed in Spanish, then posted this software on a centralized site and the other governments, the other educational institutions around the region could then choose to adopt it. This way, some school systems in Central America who were lacking any kind of online educational content were able to fill up their curriculum with very rich and highly developed content that came from more advanced countries like Chile and Argentina. You can also see that over time, then again, two years later, this goal advanced a little bit. And while in the first generation of the action plan, government proposed to establish such a network, in the second generation, governments were a little bit more proactive and said that all national educational portals should uh, fulfill the eligibility requirements to join this regional network. So you can see again another example how these different short-term generations help to make policies always more concrete, especially in an area like digital development, which is very new and which is changing as quickly as it does. So summing up, the particularities of interventions for digital development. We have the uncertainty of the trajectory, and I said this can be confronted with short-term flexibility. So stay flexible and every two, three years at least try to adjust the strategy to ever-changing digital realities. Second, the fact that ICT are all pervasive requires a decentralized approach with a broad input. The fact that there's a myriad of unpredictable side effects that arise from these uh, incountable interactions in a very complex ecosystem can be partially confronted by creating strategic private public sector alliances and ask for specialized input. So there's broad input and specialized input. It's, difficult to parse them apart, but, but that's basically the idea. And last but not least, of course, the digital age is inherently international and it requires international coordination, not only for the public sector, but also for private sector strategies.